Hey everybody, I'm Mark Walters with BigFanboy.com and I'm here at Domi Books in Austin, Texas, kind of close to downtown. And I'm actually, this is one of the most exciting interviews for me this entire time that I've been at South by Southwest. I'm with the great Wayne White. And uh, yes, I, I'm going to say the great Wayne White because, you know, like your book says, it's you need to be the richly deserved honor that you should be having. And, you know, you've had your premiere of the film, uh, which is, of course, Beauty is Embarrassing. Yes. Uh, how did that go? How do you feel about the way everybody reacted to that being here at South by Southwest? Well, the premiere was last night and it was uh, my, all my day dreams come true, basically. It just couldn't have gone better. In fact, it's the exact scenario I imagined when Neil... When I, when I said yes to this project, I thought in my ego-driven head, oh, rooms full of people worshiping me and shaking my hand and patting me on the back and buying me free drinks. So it couldn't have been better. It was just, uh, I mean, it was a once in a lifetime experience, number one. How many times do you get a movie made about your life and you get to watch it in a room with 500 people laughing and crying at, at the emotions of your life? I mean, it, their words fail me. I mean, that, I'm, 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 I know I'm in an exclusive club. I mean, not many people get their story told that way. And I feel very, very lucky. And Neil Berkeley, the director, did an amazing job telling my story. Yeah. I want to kind of walk around so we can sure. show some of your work here. Uh, it's a really nice kind of showcase here at the bookstore. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is ever so appropriate because when we post this, you will very shortly be coming to Dallas as well, so we can let all the Dallas fans know to see you. And you said it was on the 31st, right? That's right. I have a show opening March 31st at Marty Walker Gallery in Dallas. Okay. And we'll and be showing the film there as well. Yes. The show is called uh, I Say a Lot of Things, and there will be um, a private screening uh, the, the night before. But the, the gallery opening on the 31st is, of course, open to the public. And um, I'm hoping to break some new ground with that show. I'm going to. I'm doing things, um, these paintings I'm tentatively calling paragraph paintings, which is a whole paragraph of text that, uh, go, that go deeper into the narrative storytelling aspect of what I do. And they tell little stories or, or little sense memories or whatever. And then in the, in the big room of the gallery, I'm going to paint directly on the wall. I'm going to paint a mural right on the wall and, and put the words in, into Like a that. live art type deal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there a week ahead of time and paint the mural. Oh, that's great. Yeah. No, no pressure. No pressure <laughs> at all. I also want to make sure that we uh, get a shot of this. Now, this is Wayne's book. Uh, for everyone that, uh, if you want to get a good shot there. And this, of course, the title would be, Maybe Now I'll Get the Respect I So Richly Deserve, which I think is one of my favorite book titles of all time. Now talk a little bit about uh, you know, putting this bad boy together. And like, was there certain things you wanted to make sure absolutely made it in there? Were there some things that you didn't get a chance to make it in there? Is, it all, is this about as a complete of a book as we can get? That's as complete a book as you can get up to the year 2009. Yeah, that, that's when it came out. And again, I'm, I, I have an, speaking of beauty is embarrassing, I have an embarrassment of riches lately. I mean, in 2009, this book came out, which I thought was the peak, the dream, the big, biggest dream come true. It's a beautiful 400 page coffee table book designed and produced by the great Todd Oldham. Uh, what could top that? Well, a movie about your life, dude. So uh, the book is very satisfying to me. I think it includes everything I wanted to be included in it. At the same time, just like I treated my director, Neil Berkeley, I treated Todd Oldham as a designer. I, they're both artists. I let them do their thing. I don't, I don't try to tamper with it too much. Even though it's my material in my life, it's their expression too. So I let Neil do his thing without looking over his shoulder. In fact, I didn't see the movie till last night. Oh, is that right? That yeah. Was the first time yeah. And I let Todd do his thing. I mean, there was certain material we know we wanted it in there, but as far as design, hands off. I like, I like working with artists I can respect and I leave them alone because I like to be left alone, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I also want to talk, well, well, let's move down here so we can get another shot of one of your uh, great works here. Sure. Uh, I also want to talk about working with a guy like uh, Paul Rubens, which obviously that was something that a lot of people know you for is your work on Pee Wee's Playhouse, among many other things. But, but Paul is such a fascinating man as it is. Uh, when you first got involved with that, was that kind of like, a, in a way, a, like an artistic dream come true to really be able to express yourself that way? I've got a lot of dreams coming true, I'll tell you. I'm getting kind of uh, cliched here, but yeah, that was the best job I ever had in Hollywood, definitely. 
And Paul Rubens is an artist himself, you know. He went to Cal Arts, he understands visual arts very well. He's a performance artist. So he was the best boss I ever had in Hollywood. He was hip to the scene, he knew what he knew what would fly, he knew that he, and again, he respected artists and left us alone and let us do our thing. That's the number one thing you look for in any job, is the respect to be left alone, you know? Yeah. So then that's what he gave us. He gave us carte blanche to just go nuts, and we did. And uh, that's part of the uh, power of the show, that it was artists being left alone to do their thing and not too many cooks, too many producers putting their fingers in with their fears and hesitations and oh, what you know, this is too weird, whatever. Paul was the greatest boss I ever had, definitely. And then of course your work in various music videos and things, I mean you worked with Peter Gabriel, The Smashing Pumpkins, I would think that's a format that's really ripe for uh, expression as well, you know, because especially at that time, you know, it was a great time for artistic videos. Nowadays we just see guys playing on the stage, but back then we, there re it really was an art form, the music video was an art form. Yes, I was lucky enough to come along at the peak of the music video art form and uh, I did two really great videos, uh, Big Time with Peter Gabriel and Tonight Tonight with the Smashing Pumpkins. Again, Peter Gabriel, great boss, let me do what I wanted to do and that's why I, I love that job the most. The Smashing Pumpkin thing was more of a tighter concept going in, they already had the George Millet's project plotted and the visuals were just from pretty much the concept was in place so I just did my best George Millet in, in, you know impersonation but uh, I, uh, I was lucky enough to come along at the, at the peak of the video art form. I think it's still go, doing, doing well it's just on a smaller scale now. I still think it's a great medium for animators. Yeah. yeah. I think if anything we're seeing the art side of it kind of move more into the live expression of it. You know? True yeah and I think um, I, I think it's still a viable form, and especially because of the internet. I think, um, you know, it's still it's still hanging in there. I want to end on, of course, th this is uh, this is obviously the showcase piece right here, because this would be the title of the film that uh, was here at South by Southwest. Beauty is embarrassing, and you will have a chance to see this if you did not get a chance to see it at South by Southwest. Come to Dallas. Are there other uh, shows that you guys are going to have coming up, or is Dallas kind of the? Dallas is the big show for me this spring. I will be in um, Roanoke, Virginia, starting May 1st, building a, another one of my giant puppet installations. Yeah. And that one's gonna be called Big Lick Boom. Oh. And I'm gonna go there for the month of May and, uh, and uh, build a giant uh, room-filled installation of 1880s Boomtown with railroad cars and uh, puppet whores and opium dens and just my, I, you know, I love Deadwood, I love Boomtowns, whatever. So I'm gonna do my own kind of cartoon expressionistic uh, uh, art installation yeah. there in, in, uh, in, uh, at the Taubman Museum of Art in Roanoke, Virginia. If you haven't had a chance to see it, do yourself a favor and do a search for Wayne White George Jones because it's going to blow your mind. And uh, I, honestly, man, I, I can't tell you this is an honor, this is a thrill for me because I'm, I'm an artist myself and meeting guys like you means more to me than any of the other stuff I'm going to do here. And so I hope everything goes well here and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in Dallas, my man. Thank, Thank you so much for talking you. to Thank us. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Wayne White, ladies and gentlemen.